Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here from Math Math Engineering. This is our second video on the slope deflection method, and we're going to go over the modified equations. So these uh, modified equations uh, can be applied when we have a continuous beam and the ends of the beam are, are rollers uh, or hinges they are allowed to rotate. And when they're allowed to rotate, we can take advantage of the fact that we know that the moment on a hinged or a, a roller end of the beam is equal to zero. And uh, I'm going to go over the derivation for these uh, just quickly so you can kind of have an idea of where they come from. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to solve this beam for the end moments and the reactions get, uh, using the slope deflection method. So I've gone ahead on this page just to speed things up a little bit. And I've written down the, uh, the equations from the other video. So if you haven't... Uh, done that video yet and you don't know where these uh, equations came from we kind of explained it a little bit in the previous video but essentially these are the regular slope deflection equations okay that can be applied to any section uh, any any two supports um, but when we have a hinged end during an exam situation we're gonna want to use the modified slope deflection method so let me um, let me show you what that means okay so what we can do okay if we come down here and if we have our beam okay let's say for example we have ABC Okay, we have uh, some slope here, theta b, that we're solving for, and uh, and we notice that we're at point b and, and a is, is free. Okay, so we know that mab is now zero. Okay, mab is zero, and when ma and since mab is zero, okay, we can now equate that entire equation to zero. And uh, ma mba, there is a moment at ba, even though it's a roller, it's a continuous beam, so. We can't say that that's zero. So essentially, what it is that we're trying to do here is we're trying to get rid of uh, this, these, uh, this slope on the outside here from the equation. We're trying to eliminate it from the equation so that we can have a more simple equation. Okay? If, we, if we rearrange this equation for theta a, we're going to get... And I'm not going to go over the arithmetic for you guys of, of rearranging and solving for this variable. Um, it's not too important. It takes too much time in the video. I just wanted to show you where this comes from so you can have a little more understanding. Okay, so what we did is we we, uh, we rearranged for theta of equation 1. Okay, and now that we've rearranged for th uh, theta for equation 1, we can go ahead, we can plug it into equation 2. And that's going to give us a, uh, a modified new equation that we can apply when the end is hinged of 3ei over L. Okay, theta b minus psi, okay, and that's going to be plus FEMBA, it's a bracket, minus FEMAB over 2, where MAB is equal to 0. Okay. And actually, the same set of equations can be uh, applied for BC of this, this particular beam. Okay, cool. One more equation I didn't want to show you, okay, is, so we'll call this theta H, okay? This theta h here, the h refers to one of the hinged members, either a or c, okay? So if we want to find the rotation at a or c afterwards, we can apply this formula here. Where r is the rigidly connected member and h is the hinged member. Okay, so these are two equations, okay? This is the modified slope deflection equations, and this is the formula for theta of the end, uh, the end hinges if you so desire to solve for them. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and tackle this problem. Okay, so um, if you if you're not familiar with the method, go back to the first video because we did it step by step. It's the same method as the other one. Okay, so what we did first is we found the fixed end moments for this beam. For for practice, I suggest you do these, but in these videos, I usually just write them because, you know, we try and keep this video short. And um, this the next step is to write the slope deflection equations. Okay, and we're gonna and we're gonna fill them in. So um, we can also identify the degrees of freedom. So we have three uh, degrees of freedom for rotation A, B, and C. Okay, but we are really currently using the slope deflection method only looking for the rotation at B. So we have three degrees of freedom. And let's go ahead and write those equations that we just wrote out for this section A, B, okay, that we just derived. So we have A, B is zero, okay, and we have M, B, A. Let's write now, because we're going to apply as you can see in this beam, we have a hinged end, so that is applicable for the modified equation, so it's going to save us some time. So let's write in our modified equations. Okay, so we have 3ei over L. Okay, we have theta b minus psi. There is no psi in this question. There's no settlement. Uh, okay, so there's our modified equation. Let's go ahead and let's start to plug in uh, our values here, see what we get.
L uh, for section AB is 10. And we have I is just I here, so we're good. We don't need to plug in 2 here at all. Okay, we have theta B. That's an unknown. We don't have a psi for this question. There's no settlement. We have FEMBA. That's negative 125, so that's going to be negative 125. Okay. And we have uh, minus FEMAB. FEMAB is 125, so we have 125 over 2. Okay, cool. And with MAB equals 0, so if we go ahead and we, we just solve that out, we're going to have 0 0.3 EI theta B minus 187.5. Cool. And MAB is equal to 0. All right, so that's the first set of uh, modified equations, slope deflection equations for section AB. Go ahead and do BD now. So section BD okay, is going to be, let's start with uh, MBD, okay, because we know MDB is going to be zero, because we're applying, again, the modified slope deflection equations because the end is hinged. So let's go ahead and plug in. So this time we have that two EI there, so don't forget that two. Okay, that's going to be divided by, again, 10. What else do we have? We have theta b again. Okay, so as you can see, we've completely eliminated theta a, an entire variable from the from the solution, which makes um, solving this a lot quicker and a lot easier during an exam situation. Which is, you know, when you're stressed and and you're doing tough problems, that's always the best thing to do, in my opinion. Okay, and we're going to add our f our fixed end moment here. So we have uh, m b d. That's going to be two hundred. Okay, plus two hundred over two because we have a negative two negatives. Okay. And we have mdb equals zero. If we go ahead and simplify this here, we're going to get now that we have these equations. Um, how do we relate them, right? And uh, as we discussed in the other question, we're going to need to find okay our equation of equilibrium. Okay, and these are required because otherwise we have we we need something to relate these equations to, right? Because how many unknowns do we have? We have one, two, three unknowns, and we only have two equations. Okay, so we need to create an additional equation. Uh, in order to have the same an amount of unknowns as equations so that the system is, is solvable. So uh, we discussed before, when we look at a continuous beam, we're going to say that the, uh, the roller support in the center of the beam, if there is one, uh, the sum of those moments does need to equal zero. Okay, so we have MBA plus MBD it's e must be equal to zero. And now we can go ahead and we can equate these two. Okay, so let's come over here and let's plug MBA and MBD into this equation. Okay, so we're going to have 0 0.3 EI theta B, okay, minus 187.5. That's going to be plus 0 0.6 EI. So this is going down here, theta B plus 300, okay, and that's equal to zero. We can go ahead and solve for e i theta b. You know what? You can solve for uh, you can plug in e and i and just solve for theta b. But when we go back with that value into this equation here and here, we're going to need to plug e and i in again. So best just to plug e i solve for e i theta b, and just plug this whole term into these two equations and to get um, the the moments. That that's the better play, much easier. So let's go ahead and solve for e i theta b in this equation. And we should get a value of negative 125 kilonewton meter squared. And if we go ahead and take this value and we plug it into here, bring these down, we're going to get MBA is equal to 0 0.3 negative 125 minus 187.5 MBA is going to be equal to negative 225 kilonewton meters and MBD is going to be equal to 0 0.6 negative 125 plus 300 that's going to be equal to 225 and as you'll see the roller support in the center the sum of those moments must be equal to zero and uh, so we found uh, MBA and MBD okay, if you come to the next video we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna solve the member end forces the member end moments and we're going to do a check, to an uh, equilibrium check to make sure that our values here are correct. Stay tuned for the second uh, part of this video, guys. Like and subscribe.